and I were getting onto an airplane, and we didn't have seats next to each other. And um, so we sat in our respective seats, and we were going to ask the people next to us if they would so that we could sit together. And the people sitting next to me were a couple, and so they didn't want to move. And so I was texting with my partner, and I was like, hey, can you just ask the woman next to you? So she did, and she texted me back. She's like, she won't move. And so I um, call the flight attendant, and I'm like, we'd like to sit next to each other. There's a woman sitting in the middle seat. I have an aisle seat. Can you see if she'll switch with me? And um, so the flight attendant goes and asks her, and she still won't move. So I get up, <laughs> and within 10 seconds, the woman is switching seats with me. Um, because I know how to dominate in situations like that. Uh, what I did actually was tell her that my partner um, is afraid of flying and needs to be swaddled. And I offered her to do that. I was like, she will be frothing at the mouth. So she switched. Um, but the truth is that in the world, I really know how to dominate. And in the world, I'm a top. Um, I come from a long line of tops. My mom is an attorney who's never lost a case. My grandma ran a rubber company. <laughs> and my great-grandmother had seven children and everyone was terrified of her. So I was basically just like bred to be a top. But as the cliche goes, in bed, I'm a, like a total bottom. And I think it started when I was like a teenager and I was having sex with men and not really enjoying it, and so I would just kind of lay there and sh try to show my good side, which is my left side. <laughs> and um, I just like hoped to get it over with so that I could go back to being productive. Um, and I was bad at sex. I fell asleep during the sex. I had fallen asleep while getting a blowjob. <laughs> boring. Um, but, and, and that's not to say that being bad at sex is the same as being a bottom. I was just both. <laughs> um, so, when I started dating women, I started to embrace my role as a bottom and really enjoying it. I was like, wow, I can lay here and, in, and show my good side and enjoy it. <laughs> um, but at some point, my girlfriend accused me of being a pillow princess. <laughs> and so, not one to be topped in that way. I had to figure something out. And so I went to a BDSM Christmas party to just like see what else is out there. And I was surprised to find that they were serving potato salad and baba ganoush. Um, and there I observed a lot of different things that I'd never seen before, like a small man being zipped in and out of a bag by his behemoth handler, and a dom sub pair where the dom was tasering the sub's balls. Um, a like extremely old man, like he must have been in his 90s, wearing a three-piece suit with a red bob wig, laying on the floor while a six-foot-five woman in stilettos walked over him. I was like, damn. That like, if this is his last moment. <laughs> um, and while it was a really interesting ethnographic experience, I wouldn't say it like really inspired a lot of change in my sex life. Um, so a few weeks later, my girlfriend at the time and I went to go visit her mom in Seattle, and we were staying um, in an arrow bed in the living room. And her mom, who was like super woo-woo, had to go out to do a ceremony with her shaman. And so I was laying in bed with my girlfriend, and I saw, kind of peeking out of her bag, her harness and strap-on. And I was kind of inspired by the party, and so I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. And so I went and I opened her bag, and I like tried to put it on, and I could not do the party. <laughs>
have me, who was laying on my back with a baggy, strap-on, harness dick thing with my legs open. And that ended my career as a top, or as a top attempter. Um, but in the world, I continued to dominate. I uh, was running a giant mental health program at a huge hospital, storming around in like a suit, barking orders at people, like basically topping the entire hospital. And at some point a few years ago, I met my current partner, Ava. And I'm so glad she's not here because I can choose her name. Um, and Ava's a top. And um, she's also very masculine, so much so that my grandmother, for the first two years that we were dating, thought she was my boyfriend, Avon. See, <laughs> um, she has selective hearing. Um, and uh, things are just feeling really good. And it's like when you go to a restaurant and you know that everything on the menu is just going to be so good, and you're like, you know what, I'm going to try the fucking pig snout. <laughs> and so we're laying in bed, and I was like, it just like, hit me. And I was like, babe, can I top you? <laughs> and there was like this long pause. And she was like, that was like the least toppy thing. <laughs> she was like, you can't ask. You just have to take it. And I was like, okay, got it, got it. And so then I tried to wrestle her. Um, but I ended up pinned because she's stronger than me. So like after a few other incredibly awkward attempts at topping her, um, she finally suggested to me that I go see a dominatrix to harness my sexual power. Um, and I thought about it in the past, but I never really had the guts to do it, so that really molded me. Um, and so I made an appointment with Natalie West. Natalie, are you here? Natalie West is here. Um, and I put on what I regarded to be my dominiest outfit, which was like these hot, high heel leather boots, really tight pants, this sleeveless bodysuit with a turtleneck that made me look like a slutty beatnik, <laughs> and just like a full face of makeup, and I called an Uber. And the Uber took me to a warehouse downtown, and the gate slid open, and he drove the car in, and through an open door, there was this beautiful woman with like these really, really high stiletto heel, the full latex one piece. And the, the Uber driver goes, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and I get out and I follow her into the sex dungeon and into what will be our room. And there they have everything. I mean, from your sort of just regular whips and chains to like a chamber pot a waffle iron, a horsetail butt plug. I actually don't know if those things are there, but I be honest because Ms. West is here. Um, but I feel like those things were there. And um, what I said, what, you know, and she was like, well, what would you like? And I was like, I actually want a tutorial. And, um, <laughs> um, and so she put me against this leather X and showed me how to punch and hit which hurt my hand, <laughs> and then she showed me how to use a rope and to like tie her up, which I was also not particularly good at, um, or like it, I didn't, it was not elegant, but then she gave me a whip, and I started like cracking this whip on this like leather pommel horse thing, and with that sound, it just started, like it hit me, I was like, oh, this feels really good. I got this. <laughs> so I go home, wait a few days, because I want to have a surprise here. And um, Ava and I were like laying in bed, and she was reading, and I was like, this is my moment, and I tell her, and I slip out of bed, and I put on my slutty beatnik outfit. <laughs> and I come back in, and she looks up from her book, and I looked at her, and then I started to cry. And she opened her arms, and I crawled into bed, and we processed because we're lesbians. <laughs> and the truth is, I don't want to dominate her. Sex is the only place where I get to be soft. <laughs> 
where I get to surrender and give up control. Mm. And for me, that's powerful. Mm. Thank you. <laughs>